this is a bit more deep down emotional like the the real nitty gritty stuff i'll be happy when i've lost a certain amount of weight i'll be happy when i've achieved a certain fitness goal but very very quickly the next question will be what's next you will just be in a perpetual cycle of waiting for the right time and it's just never going to come and it is mind-blowing what a game changer it really is I don't know what it is, but I feel like I look really weird on the viewfinder. So hopefully the colouring or some, I don't know what it is. Just looks a little bit odd. But anyway, hopefully everything is fine from your side of the camera. Closer. All right. So I actually don't really know what this video is because it started out just being a vlog. So I was just going to film my day because honestly, I was just really in the mood to film. And then I went on my walk and I got a message from one of my clients and it was quite a long sort of thought process regarding her journey in terms of what her goals were and how she felt about that and a conflict with societal pressure and what she really wanted which sounds very very deep so it got me thinking and when I was on my walk I started making some notes about the topic and when I was writing back to her I was sort of thinking about some of the things that we were talking about and then I was like, right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna talk to you guys about it. But then I was sitting down and I was reading through the notes I'd made and I started to realize that it kind of rolled into, I suppose, experiences that I've gone through over my health transformation or my journey or, or whatever you want to call it. And I really had benefited from knowing those things or experiencing those things. And I suppose in a nutshell, essentially what it was was my top tips or like the biggest lessons that I personally learned through that whole journey and so I thought right I'm just going to share them with you and so whether this becomes a vlog or whether this becomes a standalone video I'm not sure but you guys are going to know by now um, but that's basically what I'm going to do I've written them all down on my phone and I'm going to talk through my top tips for weight loss changing your health and they're probably not going to be like your traditional be consistent, track your progress and all those sort of things. I already have videos on that sort of stuff. This is a bit more deep down emotional, like the, the real nitty gritty stuff. Also, I'm sure somebody watching is interested in what is in this shaker. It's literally just Ribena. I literally won't drink my water unless it's got squash in it or it's in a bottle. If I drink it out of a glass, there's no hope for me. So I've been using just like the juice bottles, the empty juice bottles, which I know is really, really bad. So I thought I'm going to buy a shaker and it's been going really well so far. But yeah, there's nothing fancy in here. It's got juice in it. <laughs> okay, so first one we've got is don't pin all your happiness on an end result. So it's really easy when you're setting out to achieve something that you will say, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I've lost a certain amount of weight. I'll be happy when I've achieved a certain fitness goal. I'll be happy when I have a certain amount of money in my bank account or I own a property, whatever it might be. But the reality is, is that goalpost is always moving. You might enjoy the moment when you get there, but very, very quickly, the next question will be, what's next? So it's great to have goals and to be working towards them, but don't pin all your happiness or everything on those specific goals. You need to be able to find joy in what you're doing at the moment, enjoy the process as you work towards those, because like I say, they will be ever changing and ever fluctuating. Next one is don't expect help or praise from anyone. It doesn't mean that you won't get it, but try not to rely on it. It can be really really easy when you're setting out and changing certain things in your lifestyle to expect those around you to either be there to praise you and tell you that you're doing a good job or to join in and also get on board with what you're doing and the matter of the fact is is that unfortunately even if we want people to change and do what we're doing and support us because that feels like a sort of form of support you can't change anyone and you can't make somebody either get into fitness, be more active, eat a little bit healthier, whatever it is that you're changing. It's just not possible to change another person. What you can do 
is you can set a really good example. So, you know, if you wanted your partner to eat a little bit healthier, there's probably no point in trying to force that on them, but what you can do is make changes to your diet and over time, and it can take a decent amount of time, they'll realize that maybe that could be beneficial to them as well if they see the benefits in you. That being said, the amount of times I've had someone say to me, no one's noticed that I've lost weight, no one said that I've done a good job or something along those lines, it's really soul destroying when you set yourself up to sort of need or expect that validation. And I totally get it because I'm a people pleaser. So unless the people around me are proud or thinking that I'm doing a good job, I feel like I'm failing. And it, I just constantly need that feedback or I sort of refer to it as validation from other people that I'm doing a good job. And I've had to learn quite quickly over the years that it's just not going to happen. At the end of the day, you've got to focus on what's best for you and you just need to go ruthlessly with you as a priority. And I know that sounds bad nowadays to say I'm the priority, but you really are the priority. You have to fit your own oxygen mask before you help others. You need to look after yourself. So prioritize yourself, expect nothing from anyone else. And if you get it, then that's just a massive bonus. The next one you may have heard me refer to before, and that is don't compare yourself. It's so easy. Everywhere you walk, every place you go, everything you see, you're going to be subconsciously, potentially, sub comparing yourself to what you're seeing, who you're seeing, what they're doing. But try to avoid this as much as possible. Curate what you let into your life. I'm a massive believer in ignorance is bliss in this regard. So get rid of things that are not going to help you out and start to follow or absorb information that is going to benefit you. For me personally, I can really easily fall into the comparison trap. And I know that all that happens when I start to do that is I just grind to a halt because I feel like there is just no point in me doing anything. So I try to minimize what I see, not because I don't like it, but because I know it's going to have an effect on me. And I always felt bad about that, but actually it's okay. And it's not just you know to do with health and fitness, it can be to do with anything in your life, whether certain friends that you have, whether it's certain businesses that you have, whatever it might be, do not compare yourselves because you never quite know the full story. Next up is the whole topic of motivation. So motivation is not a tool that can be relied upon. What leads to motivation is action. The longer that you wait, to be motivated or to have the perfect plan and the perfect situation and the perfect timing and have all the knowledge that you need, you just are procrastinating and putting off taking action. You will just be in a perpetual cycle of waiting for the right time and it's just never gonna come. So I'll make it short and sweet. Just don't rely on motivation. Take one tiny step in the right direction. Just take one small action and that will start to snowball. And it might take a little bit of time, but over time that motivation will start to increase. And don't expect motivation to hang around all the time either. There's still gonna be days where you have a bad encounter at work or you have to deal with a bad email or you have an argument with your partner or your family and your motivation will hit rock bottom. But on those days, all you have to do is grit your teeth, bear it and just go, you know what? I'm gonna do one little thing. I guarantee if you just do that one little thing, it will make such a big difference and you will feel so much better. And I don't wanna sit here and sound like I'm preaching. The reason I'm actually saying these things is because I have and still do struggle with all these things. And I found that these are the tools that best help me overcome them and just keep moving forwards. Okay, next up. Fluctuations are completely normal and we need to learn to accept that. That is a good thing. Let's think about this for a second because our bodies are just the most incredible machines ever. Like really think about how much your body does for you every single day, 24 hours a day, your heart beating and everything that goes into just making that one physiological function happen. And then you start to think about everything else and everything that your body has to deal with that we do or that just happens from the environment. And it is mind blowing. When you think about it, there is absolutely no way that everything that is thrown at your body is not going to cause some type of fluctuations. So when you see fluctuations, when you see weight go up or you see that your hunger's increase or whatever it might be, just go, this is normal, this is okay. I'm not failing, 
everything is normal and this proves that I am a healthy human and my body is doing its best and it's incredible. So try to have a little bit more compassion because those fluctuations are going to happen. You would be a robot if they didn't happen and so we need to start appreciating how damn cool that is. And on that note, the next one is learn as much as possible. Think of yourself as a sponge, just absorbing all the information that you possibly can. Be really inquisitive, ask questions, do research, think about yourself or whatever you're trying to achieve and be more analytical in your approach. Be interested. Listen to what other people have to say, but most importantly, do your own research and form your own opinion. And I like to even see my body as a kind of like an experiment you know I can tweak things try them out for a little while see if they benefit me and then I can move on if they don't and so I, I really did that with my skin for example don't be scared of your body really enjoy it and embrace it for everything that you can do and just start to play around and have a little bit more of a fun approach to it am I sounding crazy because I feel like I'm sounding a bit crazy but really what it is is just, I'm just in the mood where I see so many people beating themselves up and overanalyzing every single thing and being so critical. And I just want you to know how amazing your body is and how this is a never ending journey. It's not a short term process. It's something that's gonna be changing and adapting for your entire life. So you may as well enjoy the ride. Really think about everything that you can possibly achieve and go for it and enjoy the process along the way. But anyway, I digress. If there was some stuff that I would suggest you could start with learning, it would be nutritional principles, just with the basics, uh, exercise principles, so looking at different forms of training and how they may benefit certain aspects of your health, and also things like menstrual cycle or menopause. I remember for years not understanding why I'd go into the gym one day and feel really weak when a couple of days before that I went in and felt really strong. And it was only when I started to learn about the menstrual cycle, about the effect of hormones, the differences between males and females and you start to realize oh actually it all clicks into place and it gives you a much better understanding of what is going on with your body but also you know when you have those bad days or you're feeling hungrier or you're craving a certain type of food and you're just beating yourself up because you think that that's you you can actually attribute it to a physiological function that's happening or changing and that alone takes so much weight off your shoulders okay i've got one maybe two points left so one is is that your goals may change along the way and there is nothing wrong with that I have been going through this journey now for probably about five or six years. What my goals are have constantly changed, what my priorities are have constantly changed and honestly I feel like only even in the last couple of months, and I don't even know if this will last, but only in the last couple of months do I feel like I've got a really good handle on who I am, what I enjoy, why I'm doing it and the fact that I can do this solely for myself you know if I want to train a certain way I want to do that because it makes me happy and that's totally okay but take me back five or six years ago all I cared about was the fact that if I weighed a certain amount less then I would be happy and probably more socially accepted and how wrong I was you know I lost the weight and I was probably more self-critical than I've ever been in my life it sounds a little bit weird, I think, unless you've been through it, but I've had so many times where I've worked with a client and they've come on and they said, right, my overarching goal might be, for example, to lose 25 kilos. And they know that that's the weight that they were happy with in the past and they want to do it in a certain way or in a certain time frame. And so they'll start working towards it. And as they do that, they realize that either their interests or their priorities aren't actually that, that maybe the weight loss isn't what they want and there's other aspects that they want to work on instead. But instead of going, fantastic, this is amazing, I'm progressing and developing and I'm learning new things, it's really easy to suddenly feel guilty about that, to go, well, this was my goal and I don't know if I actually want that anymore. Is it okay to change your mind? Is it okay to say, actually, I don't want to be able to run that marathon or I don't want to lose that much weight or I actually want to gain muscle and get into a different form of training? I suppose we could liken it to other areas of society. For example, is it okay to say, I don't want children? Is it okay to say that I don't want to own a house? You almost feel some form of guilt by even thinking it because society has told us that that is normal. But 
it is okay if you've formulated that decision on your own and it's gonna be what's best for you, that is all that matters and nothing else. And once we can accept that the only thing that really, really matters is ourselves because when we are happy and when we are healthy and thriving and being our most authentic selves, that's gonna have the biggest benefit to everybody around you. All right, I'm gonna make this the last point before I talk any longer because I could literally talk to a park bench. But my last one is be grateful for what you have now. There's gonna be days when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see or you feel like rubbish about yourself and maybe the next day you'll wake up and you'll feel absolutely fine like we always do. We think, what was I worried about? Or you might look back at a photo that at the time you felt rubbish and you know, looking back you were like, what was I worried about? I looked great. The brain is a muscle. Just like any other muscle in your body, it needs to be worked on, you need to work it out. When you have those times, because you will have those times, I have those times, and like I said, I had them in the past, and I still have them just as bad now. Nothing has changed just because my appearance has changed, my fitness has changed, my job has changed, any of that. I am super happy. I am so lucky with what I have now, but I still get days where I look at myself or I feel like rubbish or my training is bad, and I just want to give up and just be like, why, why do I bother? But in those times, trying to find a positive to focus on, even though it's hard, is a really great habit to get into. I do this by firstly removing the trigger. If there is a specific trigger, so it could be a mirror, it could be that I'm wearing clothes and they feel uncomfortable, so I just put some comfy clothes on. Whatever it is, I'll try to remove the trigger and I'll say to myself, I am not going to waste one more minute, hour, day, week, month, whatever it might be, worrying about this because it is absolutely in no way benefiting me. So I'm better off just ignoring what I'm worried about and going and doing something completely different and just doing it. Even if I'm not happy, even if I've got a miserable face, I'm gonna go and do something different and I guarantee that eight or nine times out of 10, you'll start to feel a little bit better. And of course, it's tempting, you know, if you're looking in the mirror, and I'm pointing over here because there's actually a mirror here that you guys can't see, but if you're looking in the mirror and you're not liking what you can see, of course it's tempting to stand there and just tear yourself to shreds. But actually, it's just gonna keep you in this web or this world of just self-defeating mindset. So walk away, tell yourself that you're awesome, and then go and do something else that you'll actually enjoy. I promise you, the more you do this, the easier it'll get and you'll start to realize what a game changer it really is. All right, so they are my top tips for now. I'm sure I could think of tons more, but I thought those were the ones that I would share with you. I'm gonna go and have some lunch now because it's one o'clock. So I'm gonna go and have my, I'm gonna have oats because I love oats. And I'll take you guys along with me. Okay, so lunch is done. I don't know why I'm talking to you through a mirror. I actually thought I'd just show you, I actually bought a new mirror. And I bought a new cactus, which is very exciting because I've wanted one for years. So I've just got to name him now. I just put something up on Instagram to get some people to name some suggestions and there's some really good ones coming through. Hang on, I'll read them to you. Okay, you should be all right there. So we have Henry, Spike, Hank, which was my original preference, Alan, Walter, which is quite cute, Spike, Bob, Carl, Pedro, that's cute, Clive, Oscar, Valerio, Loki, Pete, Spike again, Carl, Jose, that's kind of cute, Hector, Curtis, Bert, oh, I don't know, what an absolute dilemma. But anyway, I have just had my breakfast. It was so good, it was the oats. And now I'm gonna get stuck into a bit more work. So I have to film some stuff for Instagram and that is a mixture of just normal photos and stuff like that and also some exercises. So I'm gonna film those. And then I have basically a whole lot of work to do. I did all my client catch-ups yesterday. So that's all sorted and I have a lot of projects going on at the moment which I'm trying to work on and it's taking up a lot of my time which is amazing 
but also my brain has a lot of tabs open and I'm a bit overwhelmed. So, and there's also loads of stuff that I really want to do. So for example, I have a newsletter, I haven't sent one in ages and it's always playing on my mind and I want to be able to send one of those. I need to add a few things to my website. I'm working on my second ebook, which is a question I get a lot, which is when my ebook's gonna be out. I have literally done everything. I could show you if I had my laptop right here, but I've literally done everything. I've shot all the images, I've written all the programs, I've written everything that's going into it because it's got pages of information about exercise and training and nutrition it's all written everything's done i just need to put a few photos in and basically proofread it and then add all the links in and i just literally haven't had the time to do it there's some things that are coming up which i have a lot of stuff i need to sort out for which is really exciting uh, but i need to find that time as well and then finally People keep asking me to start a podcast. I would absolutely love to start a podcast. I even bought a microphone to kind of force myself to start the podcast, but I just have literally not had the time. I think personally, I would like to have a podcast where I speak to other people. Although I can do ones on my own, I think I would find it easier to have conversations with people. I often think when I'm having conversations just like privately with people I know or with other personal trainers and stuff like that, I feel like it would be so valuable for people to listen to. And so that would make a really good podcast. But also then I obviously need to think about organizing it and trying to find the right people to come on and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, it's definitely in the works because I would really, really love that. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys would find that really convenient as well because I have heard that people listen to my YouTube videos as a podcast rather than having to watch it because a lot of it is just spoken. Anywho, that's basically everything that I need to do. So I'm going to film this stuff for Instagram and then it's basically gonna be an afternoon of planning, editing, and doing bits for all of those things that I just mentioned. Maybe even filming a few things for clients as well because there's a couple extra things. So yes, that's my to-do list and that's what we're going to go and work on now. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Why do I make things complicated? Why do I lose all my control? Oh, oh. I keep on letting my bad habits Make us both come crashing to the floor Something to save us Close but we're strangers Feel like we're far apart Stripping down Okay, so I am back from the gym. It was a really good session. It was just really quick, really easy. I had to do handstand holds and I was meant to do them between 30 to 45 seconds. And for some reason today, they felt so good. I just was able to hold it for ages and I actually felt kind of dizzy, which I never usually get. But when I was in the handstand, I was just like in this weird, like I just, just could stay there. Like I just was so chill and relaxed. It was a really good feeling. Um, so yeah, did that and I've just come home and I'm gonna have a quick wash and then I'm gonna head out. Pop you down here. You should be all right there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna nip out to a cafe now and do a little bit of work because I just feel like I wanna be out of the flat, but I need to get some of this stuff done that was on the list that I was talking about earlier. So I'm gonna go and do that and do a bit of editing as well and chat to some clients, which always makes me smile. I'm loving that it's light in the evenings now. It makes such a huge difference. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I will love you and leave you and I will see you for a coffee at the cafe. So I have been back from the cafe and doing my work for a little while and I thought I would do one last quick check in with you guys before the end of the day. About to have some dinner. I am starving. So you may have seen, I don't know if I've shown you yet, but I'll definitely show you. I picked up some donuts in town. So the company is called Donuts, but oh gosh, they do the best donuts. And the cafe that I was in is right next to their store. So I thought, why not? You know, treat yourself. So I will show you those. I couldn't decide which one to get, so I ended up getting three, but obviously I'll share them with Josh. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, but we are having pizza for dinner. And I know I always get questions about my pizza recipe. It's super easy. So I will link the dough recipe down below because it's like a 30 minute quick dough, it's so good. And then we just throw on all the toppings. I love pizza, like I love pizza so, so much. So I am 
really excited but I'm so glad I get to show you guys as well because I have many a times mentioned pizza and if you follow me on Instagram you'll see it quite often at least once a week and I always get questions about the recipe so I get to show you guys tonight so that will be the last thing that you see and otherwise thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one Setting to so